Okay, so we're going to uh, uh, briefly go over how to set up our optimal risky portfolios. Uh, I'm here at uh, the chapter notes for uh, lecture three. So if we just scroll down, I, I, I made this so you can download um, stock return data. So this is going to go ahead, uh, get the stock returns for any stocks you input here. So you could change this to, let's say, GLD. Um, it'll go out and get the uh, data for GLD, calculate returns, and put it in here. Uh, if you need to do this for more than five, you can just download a couple times. But uh, we're going to download the data uh, from here. The first thing to decide is how much data to pull. Again, the idea here is six months to a year is good. Uh, much less than six months and recent events will have uh, a large effect, too large of an effect. Um, over a year and the data going back uh, uh, farther and farther ha has less and less bearing on how the, the assets will behave. Uh, but again, uh, theory tells us nothing about this, so you just have to use your best judgment. Uh, I'll pull in from, from March 1st. That'll be fine. Uh, and just uh, hit download here, and I'm going to open and um, I'm going to hit download. I want to uh, open in Libra and Libra Office. Recognizes it, comma delimited. So the first thing here is make sure. So this uh, here's our here are our returns. You know, by week we have weeks over here. Uh, stock tickers up here and returns for each week. Uh, note this is a CSV file, so what I'm going to do is open up a new file to work in because um, note everyone, you know, actually quite often students will start going in here and, and putting in formulas, right? So, you know, they'll say mean of something like this. Um, and then, you know, um, not paying attention uh, in, in here, it's, it's average. Um, all right, that's. Uh, uh, so, um, in, in not paying attention, they'll just save this and move on. But the problem here is this is a CSV file. So if you save it as a CSV, you'll lose all your formulas, CSV being only just um, comma separated values, value, comma, value, comma. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new uh, spreadsheet here uh, so that um, we're, we're going to work in this spreadsheet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I have these and I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy them and move them over uh, to my uh, my new spreadsheet here. Good. Um, and I'm just to, to be a little bit organized, I'm going to label this um, sort of the data uh, in the calculation. So I'm going to rename this uh, data. Now the first now the first thing we're going to do is calculate the inputs into uh, our Markowitz Optimal Risky Portfolio. The two uh, types of inputs are we need for each asset the expected return and then the variance covariance matrix of all the assets. Uh, so in other words, what we expect the asset to do and then how that asset behaves relative to all the other assets in, in our portfolio. The theory tells us nothing about how to get this. The theory says. It, you know, Markowitz paper says you, you know these, we, we have them. So, um, uh, so keep in mind, the, you know, what we have to do here is, is often use our best judgment. So first thing I'm going to do is just calculate the weekly average. So this is the weekly average for um, each stock that I have here. And I shouldn't say stock, GLD is an ETF, it's gold. But, you know, um, I'll, I'll, pardon me, but I'll use stock and asset interchangeably. Um, so this is just the, the, the mean return, weekly return. Uh, first thing we may want to do is we're, we're going to deal with um, you know, annualize all of our returns. So to annualize the returns, it would be the weekly return times 52. Um, uh, equals that times 52. Good. Uh, so now we have our... our um, our annualized returns. Uh, now, again, the theory doesn't tell us anything about this, so it's perfectly fine for us to say use a mean reversion strategy. So to say Apple has fallen 23% over that time interval. Um, that's surprising. I mean, I knew they fell, but 23% is a fair amount. Um, uh, so we, we could we can make an argument to say well I think Apple will bounce back I think they'll um, uh, I think they'll revert to the mean here so we could say negative one times this 
Um, so we actually think that they'll do, you know, they'll return 23% um, annualized over, over our holding period. Uh, and we can do similarly, is this gold? Uh, no, this is Tesla and gold's up 19%. Um, so uh, we can also, you know, at Tesla, and again, there's nothing, there's nothing particularly wrong here. Um, but I'm just going to say uh, Tesla, I think, will earn 20% uh, over, you know, over the next uh, time interval. I'm going to stick with, uh, you know, um, gold it went 19%. I'm just going to say it's going to go up uh, 15%. Uh, and then I'm just going to stick with this is Exxon and United Healthcare. I'm going to just stick with the the me the average returns here. So I'll just say that's equal to that, um, and this is uh, equal there. So um, I'll use these as my um, as my expected return. So these are my expected annualized returns. So I'll just say expected returns here. Now. Um, the next thing we need is the variance covariance matrix. Uh, I should mention in, in, in future classes, you know, in the, in the next chapter here, in, in the coming chapters, we're going to talk about better ways to estimate the expected return. Of course, one good way is to use uh, a, an, an index model or a CAPM style model. And what we'll do there is we'll estimate one market risk premium across all assets and then just the individual uh, betas for each asset, and then that'll give us the expected return. Of course, that's not perfect because we still need to estimate the asset's beta, um, and we, we need to estimate uh, its um, one market risk premium, but it's it's better than the amount of parameters we're going to have to estimate here. So there are definitely better ways to do this. Again, I just made it up, but the idea here is we're looking at Markowitz, and I, I want to definitely make sure you're aware that Markowitz says nothing about how we get these, right? So um, good. The next thing we need is the variance covariance matrix. Uh, again, when we do when we look at index models, that'll give us a much better way to calculate uh, covariances between assets. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use historical data. There's a lot against using historical data, particularly because um, there'll be parameter. There's there's a sort of a confidence interval in our parameter estimates, and um, you know these variance covariance estimates would have. Mark, if you moved, if you actually moved the estimate around in, let's say, you know, a confidence interval, uh, it would it would change the outputs to Markowitz a great deal. So, in other words, there's there's it doesn't make a whole lot of statistical sense to use historical data um, alone. However, what we do need to get a, a to get an acceptable solution here to Markowitz is that the 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 variance covariance matrix is positive definite. So. Using historical data, I'm going to get a positive definite covariance matrix. So I'm going to use historical data to ensure I get a, a positive definite matrix. So if you're using Excel, this might be different uh, where everything is. Um, I'm going to go statistics, covariance. I got my input range there. I'll just throw my, my, um, my outputs right here, which is fine. Group by columns. Uh, okay. So this gives me my variance covariance matrix. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead um, and label these so I have everything labeled properly. Um, and that was incorrect. So I want to paste it from here over. Good. And I'm going to paste special transpose. If you're on your your own computer, you might, you might want to put a hotkey to a uh, pay special transpose because we'll need that a couple times. Um, the next thing we need to do is fill in this variance covariance matrix. And there are, are better ways to do this, but I'm going to um, just pay special and transpose here um, to, to fill in this variance covariance matrix. Transpose, and then I just have one here. Now, this is uh, covariance calculated off of weekly data. Um, so we're going to get a, uh, an annualized covariance. The first thing I should, uh, before we do that, however, I should mention um, Excel has an error in it's the way that it calculates covariance. I don't know if LibreOffice, what, what I'm using here, has an error in the way that it calculates covariance, but I'll, I'll go ahead and adjust for Excel's error. So um, if we have, we have, 51. So we have uh, 50 data points. 
So to adjust for the Excel's error, error, we have to multiply this variance covariance matrix by uh, 50 divided by 49. So uh, just the number of observations I have here minus the, divided by the number of observations minus one. So to multiply this variance covariance matrix, I'm just gonna copy this. And then I'm just gonna say, um, paste special, multiply. And that'll multiply everything by that value. Uh, good. Uh, and the next thing is to, to annualize. And I'm just going to make a note that this is, this is annual. So to annualize, we're going to multiply by 52. Uh, so we're going to multiply uh, this times. Uh, and you know what? To, to, to make this a bit cleaner, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, 52 out here. Uh, and then just say equal to um, that times that and I'll go ahead and lock that in. Uh, so I'm just gonna paste it down there, delete that. There we go. And copy this down. So now we have our uh, variance covariance matrix annualized and we have our expected returns annualized and so this is what we're going to use uh, in our as inputs into our optimal portfolio calculation so i'm going to make a new sheet here and just uh, rename it this is our you know, this is going to be our portfolio sheet so uh first thing i'm going to do is just you know grab the inputs copy them here uh, and drop them over into this sheet here i'll do paste special I'm going to do formats and transpose. Uh, and I don't want to include formulas. Uh, so let me redo that. Pay special uh, numbers. I don't have formulas here. Um, transpose, multiply. Oh, I want to get rid of multiply. Okay, there we go. And go grab our variance covariance matrix. Copy. Um, paste it over here. And I'll just, I'll throw this right here. Pay special. Uh, I don't want to transpose. Uh, and text numbers, date, format, not formulas. Okay, good. So here we have our, um, you know, this is our annual uh, variance covariance matrix. Uh, what we are going to do um, is, so now what we have to do is calculate the portfolio mean, uh, portfolio um standard deviation and the sharp ratio. So what we're going to need and what the output before we start here, what we're looking for is a set of weights. We want a set of weights uh, that makes our, our portfolio have the highest sharp ratio we can. So the first thing we need here um, is, you know, I'm going to have a column for, for these. These are weights. Um, and I'm just going to set these to zero for now. And then one constraint we have to have, of course, is that our weights sum to one. Our weights may not necessarily have to be positive, but they all have to sum to one. Um, so this is this is the sum of our, our weights here. Uh, and then to make our calculation easier, we're going to have to go in and, and set these equal. So our weights are going to... Um, now, note it, I'm not hard coding these up here. Uh, I'm setting it equal. So what... And the reason why we're doing this is solver is going to change these here and we want it to automatically change these up here as well uh, hence we're not hard coding it good so now we have these um, all looking at over there and uh, good so now we have our weights again to make a you know this is going to um, flow into our calculation uh, but uh, we're going to uh, so I'll tell you what, we'll calculate the mean first, um, just because now we have our weights, we have our expected return. So our, 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 the mean of our portfolio is going to be equal to, and we'll use um, the sum product. And it doesn't have tab completion, clearly. Uh, so the sum product, uh, we're going to take, it's going to take two vectors, and, and vectors just a, a, a set of numbers here, an ordered set of numbers here. Um, uh, and what the sum product is going to do, it's like, if you're familiar, it's like an inner product um, over vectors. But the idea of what it does, and, and 
you definitely want to, you know, so now that I, I can see it's, it's correct, it's calculating it correctly. Um, it's going to take one times 1.79 plus zero times 15 plus zero times 20, you know, uh, to the end. Of course, um, since it's one times 1.79 and zero times 15, 20, 23, and seven, and seven, we know the answer should be 1.79. Um, so good. So we have some product. Now we're going to have to calculate the, the portfolio standard deviation. To do this, uh, we're first going to say um, this is equal to uh, the weight on Exxon Mobil times the sum the sum product, uh, and we are going to of these sets of weights over here, and I'm going to go ahead and lock those in, comma these weights over here. And I'm not going to lock these in because I want them to move. So there we go. Copy. Um, and I, I'm going to paste this over here, paste this over here and make sure that everything there, it's, it's doing what it, it should be. Uh, it's, it's multiplying the first, the, the red um, set of weights by, by the variance covariance matrix and the weight above there. So it's, it's behaving like we would expect. Um, of course, this is going to give us um, just uh, a, a variance of uh, Exxon Mobil um, because, again, all the weights are one here. So now the standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root. The, the variance is going to be the sum of these, so it's just, um, I should say, uh, equal to the uh, square root of the sum of these values here. Just good. There we are. So we have a uh, standard deviation of 20%. Um, standard deviation, annualized standard deviation of 20%. Uh, and I can check that. That's Excel, that's um, Exxon's variance. So I should say equal to square root. So I mean, just to. Yeah, so 20.02. So everything, everything's fine. Um, uh, the, the, we have ultimately the, standard, the mean and standard deviation of Exxon at this point, uh, confirmed. Um, so the other thing we need is the Sharpe ratio. And um, RP, the Sharpe ratio. The Sharpe ratio, we'll, we'll have a expected, um, we'll, have, we'll use a risk-free rate, risk rate of zero. Uh, so we have a mean um, and a standard um, mean divided by standard deviation. This gives us gives us gives us our sharp ratio. Uh, note, I'm not putting that in percent. Uh, so now we have we have a, a spreadsheet that for any given set of weights, it'll calculate the mean, the standard deviation, and the sharp ratio of the portfolio. So in other words, I can go here and put uh, 0.5 and 0.5, and we'll get a new mean and standard deviation. So now what we want to do, we can directly at this point, and, and keep in mind, you, you might want to clean this up a little bit so it's easier to work with. I'm just creating this quickly, but um, you may want to go, go in and, and uh, you know, add some borders here. Um, it is you know, very useful to, 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 to do this just to make your um, sp spreadsheet sort of uh, uh, much more legible. It makes it much easier to work with by... by Particularly segmenting off here, so you know that this is, you know, this is, um, you know, the one isn't included in this line. The one is just the sum. Um, but uh, I'll let you, you know, make sure that you can format your spreadsheet um, how you, what, you know, how it works for you. Um, but again, I should mention you, you make a spreadsheet. You're going to send this to me, so it should be um, labeled in in um, formatted in such a way that it's easy for anyone to to see what you're doing. Uh, but uh, so at this point, we have a spreadsheet that we can directly go ahead and calculate uh, our optimal portfolio, uh, the portfolio that maximizes the Sharpe ratio. So to do so, I'm going to go in here and uh, say um, use now tools, yeah, solver. I'm using LibreOffice, which has a different solver. Uh, it's a differential evolution nonlinear solver. But this interface should be about the same with what you're using in Excel. So um, f to, find the, to directly find the optimal risky portfolio, we're going to set the target cell, the Sharpe ratio, to a maximum by changing these weight cells. 
subject to the constraint. So here is our constraint. Subject to the constraint that this cell is equal to 1. And now we also have to come up with um, or decide what other constraints we have. Uh, 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 normal uh, Constraints that are normal that a portfolio manager has to, to contend with are um, whether you can short or not and also whether you want to put a, a limit on to how large a position you'll, you can have in any one stock. Keep in mind this you know, Markowitz mean variance optimization, this is just, you can think of it as sort of a dumb algorithm. It will, if you have a particular asset in your portfolio that has a, a high expected return and, and a low covariance um, with everything else, you know, Markowitz, so in other words, it's a very attractive stock to put in your portfolio. Markowitz might put 85% of your portfolio in that stock. Um, so you might want to not, you might want to limit that with your um, with your constraints and say, I won't have any stock in my portfolio take up more than 40% of my portfolio. So this is up to you. Uh, and this is, you know, constraints that are, that are, you know, generally put on portfolio managers, often out of their control. Uh, the one thing to say from a, a theoretical standpoint, the more constraints you have, um, the worse your, you'll never put a con more constraints on and get a better uh, optimal risky portfolio. As you put more and more constraints on, your optimal risky portfolio gets worse and worse and worse. So you don't want to, you know, the more you just keep in mind, you, you would, um, you don't want to put too many constraints on. So I'll just go ahead and add a constraint here that um, no stock can take up more than 40% and I'll allow shorting. So I'll go ahead and say they have to be greater than negative, um, I'll say 0.2. So we, well, we can go short 20% of our portfolio on any given stock. So um, I'll go ahead and solve this. This is a differential evolution, so it's going to go till it stagnates a little bit, which it'll do in about three seconds or, or so here. And then um, I'll get a solution. You shouldn't have to go into, you won't have to use uh, differential evolution. There we go. Um, so we have a maximum sharp ratio of 0.89. Um, okay, I want to keep the result. So what I'm going to go now, this is ultimately the output that you want um, from, from your optimal risky portfolio is this set of weights. So what this tells me, um, you know, rounding a little bit here, is that if I have a $100,000 portfolio, I want to short uh, 20000 of Exxon, uh, put uh, 40000 of my, buy 40000 worth of GLD, um, buy, you know, uh, about 6,900 of Tesla, buy 40,000 of Apple, and buy 33,000 of United Healthcare. So these are, this is the output here. We want to, we take these weights, we go over into our brokerage account, and we, we buy, we implement this portfolio. So this is ultimately the output. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm going to say, okay, this is the, and, and note, um, move this down a little bit, and note that this is my optimal. We definitely want to, to record this and just to make sure, you know, I don't uh, have everything squared away. I want, you know, labels so I know. And then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, record this stuff right here. Um, base specials, no transpose, uh, good. Um, so I've recorded these values. Uh, now, so in a sense now, you know, we're sort of done. We can go in and implement this portfolio. Uh, however, if we want to chart the efficient frontier, and I uh, definitely I want you to chart the efficient frontier in your spreadsheets, uh, then we have to do um, we have to uh, it's it's an easy procedure. But uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna do is is for every um, expected return, we're gonna minimize the portfolio standard deviation, and that's gonna give us our opportunity set. You know, the the full set of um, uh, portfolios in which we can invest. Although we're this is the one ultimately that we want to invest in. So uh, to do that, our opportunity set, um, we only want the upper half of our, uh, of, uh, of our opportunity set. That's the efficient frontier. So the first thing we can do is find the minimum variance portfolio. So we can go back to uh, solver. Uh, and now what we want to do is set the target cell to the standard deviation and find a minimum by changing the, sh the same sh cells here. Uh, and what we want to do is leave the constraints the same. Keep in mind, if you change the constraints, then you know you would have gotten a different optimal portfolio. So don't, um, 
change the constraints as as we're doing this. The the uh, constraints um, uh, stay the same. Uh, we will add a constraint when we do the 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 rest of the efficient frontier. But the idea is you don't want to change these three right here. Good. So uh, set the target cell to a uh, minimum by changing cells. So we'll go ahead and solve here. Of course, you know we should get something. Um, you know. Uh, Good. Um, okay. Keep result. Uh, so what did we get here? We have a standard deviation of um, 15.82. Good. It's less than our our standard deviation here, which means, well, um, if it was, wasn't, was we would have done something wrong. Uh, we should see the standard deviation of the portfolios go up after this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I tell you what, I'm just going to copy this and make it um, sort of simple. Uh, and again, um, so I can just paste once, uh, but I'll just go paste special, uh, okay. Um, and then you'll just, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and label this. Uh, so this is our minimum variance portfolio. Now from this point, so this tells me, um, you know, our minimum variance portfolio will return 7.67 with a standard deviation of 15%. So I want to get uh, all the, you know, portfolio opportunities set with an expected return above 7.67. And I'll, I'll, I'll just go at 2% intervals um, right now. So uh, next, we're going to go back to Solver. And we're going to say, okay, now we want to set um, the target cell, standard deviation, still to a minimum by changing these cells, but we want to add a constraint. Subject to this is equal to, uh, uh, let's say, what is it, 7.67? I'm going to say 9%, uh, 0.09. And we're going to hit solve. Note our constraints are working here, meaning everything's less than 0.4, everything's above, uh, what is it, um, negative 0.2. Uh, okay, mean equals to 9%, good. So we, we look good here. I'm going to go copy these. Copy, paste special, okay. And, you know, so now what we need to, to plot our, our efficient frontier is the mean and standard deviation for, for, uh, for our portfolio. So you, these are the two things that we're ultimately going to graph. Now it's simply a matter of now I'll go to 11% uh, and we sweep out the, the whole efficient frontier in this fashion. So I'll, I'll go back to, uh, to Solver, um, set this equal to 0.11 and resolve. Hopefully we'll get a good solution. We'll paste it in there. Then we'll go up to uh, 0.13, 13%. Um, and, and so forth. And in, in that fashion, you'll get the, the entire efficient frontier. Um, keep results. Okay. Pay special. Um, okay. So, and, and notes, uh, as it should be, this is our minimum variance portfolio and our variance is going up, uh, which is good. Uh, it's what we would expect. Um, so you would just finish the, um, the efficient frontier in this fashion. Uh, of course, you know, at a certain point you can go, um, by more than, than 2% intervals. Uh, and then you'll just you can go ahead and graph that. So you can go ahead and put a graph in here that shows your efficient frontier. Uh, but before you do all that, uh, make sure you go in and you buy your, uh, portfolios, your optimal portfolios in your trading account. That should, uh, get you started or, or get you, uh, I think that's a, uh, you should be able to, to um, uh, pretty much, you know, complete your spreadsheets with this. Uh, of course, always feel free to ask questions.